What's going on, everybody? Well, these are the ingredients to an electrolysis process. I'm going to use the the rebar for an anode and the plastic tub, non-conductive for the the holding of the electrolyte solution. And then you have the Arm & Hammer washing soda that's going to be used and I'm going to use that to measure out the water but ultimately what I'm wanting to do is remove the rust from this Homelite C5 solid nose bar that I have here that was put up in storage for a really long time there's the C5 there and I apologize for the lighting. It's my shop. There's one fluorescent light in here. Well, no, I lied. There's two. There's one over there. But it's not very good. It's not lit very well. So if, you know, things I do later uh, pick up, then I might invest some more in lighting. But until then, we'll just be working under this light here. But there's the, the battery charger that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to measure out my solution here. And then I'll bring you back to set everything up. And I also have to wash uh, all the oil and stuff off the, the bar or anything that's going to prevent the, the, the chemical reaction from happening. So... I will be back here once all this is set up. All right, so here I am back. I got the solution mixed up. They recommend for every one gallon, you use one tablespoon of the washing soda. Now that says super washing soda, so I don't know if that's gonna make a difference or not. Hopefully not but I guess we'll see. Um, I will provide a link to the website I'm getting my information from, just for your reference, in case you wanna look it up. But I noticed that there appears to be some pitting, possibly, on the bar. So, I don't know if this bar is going to be salvageable or not. So, I guess it'll be a, a, a good experiment anyway, you know. Don't use something you really want to keep or that you have some sort of attachment to because it, it may end horribly. So, I'm going to submerge that. You're going to connect your, your negative lead to the piece of hardware that you're wanting to clean the rust off of. And then you're going to connect the positive lead, preferably out of the solution. And I have this piece of rebar that I bent a U-shape. So hopefully that will provide enough surface area. And when I submerge the bar, it will be far enough away that it won't cause any current problems. But basically it's just gonna pull the rust off of that bar and then it's gonna collect on the anode or your positively charged metal that's in the solution and that is basically a rough description of what this electrolysis is like I said I'll provide a link um, for your reference so you can read up more on the specifics and uh, everybody has their own way of doing things, so I'm gonna do my cleanup and my uh, oiling of this bar differently than what he's gonna do to his. I'm gonna heat this bar up to about 150 to 200 degrees after it comes out of the solution, um, and then I'm gonna oil it. So as the metal cools, it draws that oil in. Um, that was per 
someone who knows a heck of a lot more than me about this stuff on a forum. It's called arborsite.com. Lots of good stuff there. Uh, Subforum chainsaws. Lots and lots of good information there if you're not aware. And I imagine anybody who knows anything about chainsaws knows that that place exists and that's the place to go if you want to find some information. So, But if you're new, arborsite.com, subforum chainsaws. That's the place to be at. All right, I'm going to get all this hooked up and uh, then I'll show you the, the chemical process happening. I would rather not electrocute myself on video. So I'm going to put this down and then I'll show you what it looks like as it's working. All right, so I have it all set up. Just clicked it over to on. Uh, I'm using a 10 amp battery charger. It's, see, see it's running at 10 amps. I'm not running over, so that's good. There's no problem with the, with the way I have it set up. So positive lead out of the water, that's important, out of the solution or else It'll eat up your positive lead attached to your anode, which is my rebar. The negatively charged attached to your piece of, in my case, a chainsaw bar, but your, your piece of hardware, whatever you're trying to clean off. And as it works, you can see the bubbles starting to form. along your piece of hardware and I imagine it's only going to get uh, more reactive as the process goes on. Now as I said before I'm no expert in anything. Uh, all of this stuff is relatively new to me. Just knowledge that I've garnered from reading forums and message boards and whatnot so I'm just recreating stuff that's already been done and hopefully that I'm doing it right so if anybody more knowledgeable than I has any um, constructive criticism or comments feel free to let me know I'm always always wanting to learn more uh, and I definitely don't want to keep making mistakes if you know for whatever reason I am making mistakes um, if you hear me say something that's not true then chances are whatever source I got it from is giving out false information so don't put my head on a spike please because all I'm doing is regurgitating information that I've read other places so a lot of the stuff you will see here are all going to be uh, first time stuff for me, you know, reading about it on online and then putting it into practice. You can see um, the rebar is already reacting and it's only been in for about a minute now minute to two minutes. I believe uh, everything looks good. He said if you see green stuff uh, coming off the, the metal, that's normal. So I know that it's actually working. So all in all, it, it looks like it's doing its thing. So I'm going to get off here and uh, pick up in the morning because I'm gonna leave this overnight hopefully it doesn't burn my shop down you know uh, good thing I have insurance I guess but I don't know if me burning my shop down with a battery charger would be covered under insurance I don't know one would hope you know but you know how insurance is so uh, yeah, on a lighter note, I will see you in a bit. All right, so it has been 
about 13 or 14 hours since I put this on. And as you can see, I don't know, it appears to be doing what it's supposed to be doing. I have to take the, the bar out <clears throat> and look to really be certain. They say when the oxidation turns black is when you should take it out. But because of the, the foam, I can't really see. And I sure enough ain't about to try and move it out of the way, you know. Get electrocuted. But I'm going to take it out and clean it off. So I'll take pictures of it as I'm pulling it out so you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like after it comes out. And the next step of the process is to wash it with warm soapy water and scrub it with a, a Brillo pad, something like that. It, you know, you'll be able to go follow the link that is included and see all that. Scotch Bright pad. But it's a different type of Scotch Bright pad than I got because I couldn't find any of the other ones, so. Just got what I could get. Another thing about doing this process is it creates uh, a gas, a flammable gas. So I left my window open last night just in case. It doesn't produce a lot, but it's flammable and so is the foam. So disclaimer, be careful. Don't blow yourself up if you try it but I'm gonna go ahead and <clears throat> pull this out get it cleaned off I got the grill preheated I'm using the grill because I figured the wife probably wouldn't like it if I used the oven so keep it all outside but that'll be part two this video is already getting pretty long so I'm gonna split it up and I'll do the the baking and the oiling of the bar in the second part of the video.